What's the job, boys? Welcome back to another reaction video. Today, right in the Curse of Gucci Mane's 1017 label, bro. Uh, this was some shit I've been wanting to watch for a little minute, you feel me? Because, nigga, Gucci Mane, bro, he signed people, bro. And they may end up dead or in jail the next, nigga, the next month, the next two months, you feel me? I don't know what's going on. They saying it's a curse, you feel me? Nigga, Big Scar. RP Big Scar, you feel me? Our big scar for real, bro. That nigga big scar was hard as fuck, bro. Real talk, bro. Crazy, crazy situation how he went out, bro. Pretty sure he OD. I'm pretty sure that's not the first rapper that OD from Gucci Mane's label. Uh, like it's it's just crazy, bro. Like he, Gucci Mane, you either end up dead or in jail, bro. Cause he got a, he got a couple artists that's dead, and he got a couple artists doing some serious time in jail, bro. So it's like. And you going one way or the other looking like signing the Gucci Mane. Gucci Mane started his first label. Shout out Hip Hop Daily too, bro. You know, been over here reacting to the videos for a little minute now, bro. This is a little video I want to do for a little minute too because you know, it's been all over social media, bro. If you've been if you've been on social media, you know it's it's no it's no uh it's no it's no hidden, you know, no hidden uh like it's not a secret that, you know, something's going on in Gucci Mane's label because everybody's saying it, so Seven, and it's been clear from the jump about. that he should have just stuck to rapping. Almost every artist he signs either ends up dead or in jail. And today we're breaking down the wild stories behind why fans think his label 1017 is cursed. The biggest reason everyone's talking about the 1017 curse lately is because of Enchanting's tragic death from a overdose. She was a 26 year old artist who signed with Gucci Mane back in 2020. But after dropping some music on his 1017 label, Enchanting went independent in 2022. Apparently, Enchanson had been fighting drug addiction for a while, and a few days before she passed away, she went to her friend's house to try to kick the addiction. Unfortunately, mm. it didn't work out though, and on June 10th, Enchanson was rushed to the hospital because she had a heart attack caused oh, you know, what? by a drug overdose. On what though? What you out here doing? Like, come on, bro. Like, you look too good to be out here doing drugs that hard like that, bro. Enchanson had. Come on, bro, Gucci, bro. You were supposed to help her, Gucci, bro. Not just let her, you feel me, Gucci? She was supposed to, you the, you the label, hun, go ahead, huncho, bro. You supposed to sit it down, you feel me? Let her know, hey, bro, you can't, you feel me? You was already telling me you was, you know, battling these, these, you know, addictions and stuff like that. You feel me? Come on, you feel me? Like, you know, let me get you a therapist. Let's go to therapy, you feel me, you know? Let's talk to somebody, you feel me? Let's, you know, what is it called? What it, let's, you know, you know, rappers be sending themselves to rehab for a little bit when they feel they need to, bro. Let, let me, you know, find you a good little, you know, get your head together, bro. Don't just let her, you feel me? Fight drug addiction for a while. And a few days before she passed away, she went to her friend's house to try to kick the addiction. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, though. And on June 10th, Crazy Jensen was rushed to the hospital because she had a heart attack caused by a drug overdose. She tragically died the next day, and Gucci hopped on social media to give his respects. But as soon as the news broke, people started talking about the 1017 curse and how Gucci's artists always end up dead or in jail. Gucci's wife, Keisha Kayor, jumped in to defend him. But there's a good reason why fans think something is wrong with Gucci's label. Back in 2007, Gucci started his first label, so YC Entertainment. Back then, Gucci didn't sign a lot okay. of artists and was pretty much dropping his own mixtapes through the label. But he did start working with Frenchie, Waka Flocka Flame, and some producers like DJ Drama. Gucci was working with a company called Mize Entertainment to help him run the So Icy label. And after a few years, Gucci closed the label because Mize Entertainment was allegedly acting shady. According to reports, they were selling Gucci's verses and booking him on shows he never agreed to. So Gucci dropped them and moved on. The first label didn't work out, but that didn't stop Gucci from trying again. In 2010, he started 1017 Brick Squad and signed artists like Waka Flocka Flame, OJ the Juice Man, and Slim Duncan. Okay. Gucci and Waka Flocka Flame were linking up and dropping some of the hottest trap music in the game, but it all fell Real apart. Real talk, bro. You don't hear about Gucci no more and Gucci this, Gucci that. Like, you don't hear about Gucci Man no more, but like, when you say Gucci Man, it's like, like, damn, like, where Gucci Man been at? Like, you feel me? Like, like he was saying, early 2010s, early, you feel me, them times, early, you feel me, 2000s, shit like, Gucci had this shit on lock. Hate him or not, you feel me, believe it or not, know it or not. Gucci was, you hear Gucci, nigga, he, oh shit, Gucci, man, what the fuck, you, like, Gucci, you feel me, he, Gucci, man, was him, still is him. I just don't know, you feel me, you don't really hear his name like that no more, I don't know, like, like he all right, like, what's going on, bro? When Gucci started beefing with Waka's mom. 
Walker's mom, Deborah, used to be Gucci's manager, but there were some money issues behind the scenes, and Gucci claimed that Deborah was stealing money from OJ the Juice Man and friends. Beefing with the mom. And she. 1017 Brick Squad ended up falling apart over the situation, but the money drama wasn't the only issue the label had. Back in 2011, Slim Duncan was at a studio in Atlanta getting ready to shoot a music video for Gucci Mane's track, Push Ups. Another rapper named Young Vito was at the studio that day, and something sparked a beef between him and Slim Duncan. It's not clear exactly what happened next, but at some point, Young Vito upped his strap and tragically killed Slim Duncan. Young Vito skated on the murder charge, but he was convicted of aggravated assault and possession of a firearm and got hit with a 25-year sentence. After it went down, Gucci rapped about Slim Duncan and Walker Flock of Flame on the track R.I.P. Slim Duncan and said, Man, I miss my dunk so much, I dig his up. If I could bring his back, I would dig his up. We would rarely go to sleep. We were balling so much. BSM and 1017, Dirt Gang, stand up. Remember, Flocka was my goon. Now he ran his mills up. Slim Duncan mm. wasn't the only OG on Gucci's roster. You can't really blame that on Walk, though. Can't really blame that on Walker Flocker, bro. Shit, it's that his mom was stealing from the label, bro. Man, you so you, you, Walker Flocker's probably like, oh, yeah, my mom, good manager. You feel me? She do this, do that. Good manager. Get us, get us deals. Get us locked in. Shit like that. The whole time, you stealing money from the label, bro. Who got hit with the 1017 curse, though. OJ the Juice Man came up in the same apartment building as Gucci. I don't know about Gucci, OJ the Juice Man. They were tight way before either of them started rapping. OJ and Gucci put out a lot of music together. Back in the day, OJ's mixtapes were popping off in the Southern hip hop game. Everything was cool for a while, and in 2010, OJ was even featured on Double XL's freshman class. But then he started falling off and even got into a Twitter beef with Gucci. Gucci had claimed that Walker's mom was stealing money from OJ, and for some reason, OJ got pressed at Gucci over the situation and said he was never actually signed to Brick Squad. OJ and Gucci squashed the beat. But OJ's been getting hit with the 1017 curse ever since. After he fell off in the rap game, OJ allegedly went straight back into the trenches. Back in 2022, he was booked on gun and drug charges. Then in March 2024, the news broke that OJ had been arrested again. According to the police report, a cop tried to pull him over for speeding in Georgia, but OJ didn't stop at first. OJ started a little chase, but then he decided to just pull over instead of making the situation worse. Speeding and running from the cops is bad enough, Shit, but it's about to get way. This nigga been outside for a little minute, nigga. Been active too, bro. I still don't know who this is, bro. It worse for him. When the cops searched OJ's whip, they found cocaine, other drugs, and a gun too. OJ had been sitting in jail ever since the news broke, and it don't look like he's gonna be coming home anytime soon. When Brick Squad was falling apart, Gucci started beefing with his artist Frenchie too. Frenchie is Waka Flocka's cousin, so Frenchie definitely wasn't gonna switch up on Flocka and keep rocking with Gucci Mane. Oh, yeah, Frenchie even dropped a diss track aimed at Gucci called Sometimes and rapped, We built this company together, now you bugging out. Throw my hands on you? Nah, but I don't wanna sock you out. Yeah, you got me screaming out. You don't want me to have what I have, because in my eyes, you a. Gucci is the reason Frenchie even had a career, but Frenchie said that Gucci didn't want anyone in the team to win. So if we switch from So Icy to go to Brick Squad, and you doing, like you want, you don't want an artist to get bigger than you. That's what it is with Gucci, man. Mm. If you notice that. They ended up squashing the beef, and Gucci even supported Frenchie when he started his own label. But the 1017 curse hit Frenchie hard. At first, it looked like Frenchie might be good at running the label. He was allegedly the first person to discover Nicki Minaj in French Montana. So obviously, Frenchie could pick artists with huge potential. Unfortunately, the label didn't work out though, and it was all downhill from there. Oh, nigga, you could have fallen off fast. Oh, nigga, you could. Oh, nigga, how you messed that up? You could have had you a big one, some big ones. Then how you messed that up? Run, he barely survived getting shot in the neck. Luckily, he made it out of the situation alive. But in 2023, he got wrapped up in another wild situation. Frenchie and a bunch of other dudes broke into a family's home because they thought there was 100k worth of weed stashed there. They ran. We breaking into homes for weed now. Yeah, I understand you trap man this, trap man that. I need them packs. Yeah, I understand that. But if you gonna run in somebody's home where you said there's what? And it was all downhill from there. In the net situation. Frenchie and a bunch of other dudes broke into a family's home because they thought there was 100k worth of weed stack. So you broke into the home thinking there was 100k worth of weed, right? So you don't, you don't think that, oh, let me see what happened. They raided the place and even pistol whipped an autistic teenager who lived there. But it turns out there wasn't even any weed in the crib. Frenchie was allegedly in the house when it went down and drove the getaway car too. And in 2023, he got- Oh, he got away off on the- 
hit with a 12 year sentence over the situation. Gucci ended up catching a gun case in 2013 and was locked up for a couple of years. But when he came back home, he announced that he was starting a new label, 1017 Eskimo Records. Gucci signed artists like Rallo, Asian Doll, and Hood Rich Pablo Juan. And at first it looked like he had everything figured out. Rallo was the first one to sign on the new label. Rallo linked up with Gucci in the club. And Gucci wanted to know if Rallo had to deal with anybody. Um, I was in a club with my partner named Pete at QC. And Gucci, it was actually Gucci party. And Gucci had done seen me. He broke his neck. He was like, oh, that Rallo. I gave him a doubt, gave him some love. He told me I said, a big fan of me. And he wanted to work with me, man. And he wanted to know was I signed to anybody. Rallo had been hanging around Birdman, Young Thug, and a bunch of other rappers who had labels but nobody had signed him yet. So the next day, Gucci brought Rallo to the studio with him and gave him a verse for free. And when Gucci set up 1017 Eskimo Records, Rallo was the first dude he called. Linking up with Gucci should have been a huge win for Rallo, but instead of focusing on the rap game, Rallo hella did just get, oh my God, Gucci, bro, you ain't gonna never shake the allegations. You ain't gonna never shake these allegations. Rallo hella did just get out, bro. Just got out a couple months ago, not too long ago. And we talking about Rallo kept both feet in the trenches and ended up getting caught with almost a thousand pounds of weed on a private jet. The cops took Rallo's properties, jewelry, and pretty much everything else from him. Getting caught still didn't slow down his hustle though. And Rallo got caught trying to make drug deals from behind bars and ended up getting hit with an eight year sentence in 2022. While Rallo was locked up, his family tagged Gucci on social media and asked him for support. They said Rallo didn't want any money or anything like that. He just wanted Gucci to shout him out. It turns out that Rallo had already left 1017 Eskimo by the time he got caught though. Gucci made an interview with Charlemagne the God and revealed that Rallo left the label and gave back all the money Gucci had given him. We had part of ways on the music side. So he started doing music. He wanted to do his own music. And he actually gave me the money back for the deal he got before he got. Wow. That was crazy. Like he was like, he, you know, he do it on his own. Which I had to respect then. Mm -hmm. So we had already part ways been his wise, but I, it's still my dog. Back in 2021, Rallo hopped on social media and said he's not signed to 1017, but he still considers him all family. Rallo got hit with the 1017 curse, and the same thing happened to Hood Rich Pablo Juan. Pablo signed a 1017 Eskimo right after Rallo did. His name was popping after he dropped the track, We Don't Love Him, and everyone thought Pablo was gonna blow up even more when he linked up with Gucci Mane. That's not how it all worked out though. Pablo started taking L's on social media, and in 2019, people started clowning him for allegedly getting beat, robbed, and stripped naked at the studio. Then Pablo got his chain snatched while he was trying to squash someone else's beat. Yo, bro. Yo, bro, why does it, like, it's, it sounds like they signed the Gucci man and life just go downhill. Nigga getting beat up, stripped in the, stripped in the studio, nigga getting chain snatched, trying to, nigga, that's why you don't, that's why you mind your business. You trying to squash somebody else's beef, not saying, you know, it wasn't, you feel me, not saying, you know, you can't help whoever it was, but. And you trying to squash somebody else's beef and then got your shit snatched. So now what? <laughs> like, that's, man, that's damn near, nigga. Nigga, you could say that nigga set you up. <laughs> Real talk. Gucci ended up dropping Hood Rich Pablo Juan from the label, but that wasn't the end of Pablo. And then got dropped after you got violated. You got signed, thought you was gonna make some bread. You intervened with somebody else's beef you had no problem with. You got violated. Gucci Mane, nah, nah, Gucci Mane don't want nothing to do with you. You get dropped. Nah, what happened? Close drama. In October 2020, he got hit with a RICO case. Rico and the charges. cops were claiming he was a member of the Rolling 20s neighborhood Bloods. The cops started investigating them back in 2019. They named Hoodrich Pablo Juan and 45 other alleged Bloods in the indictment. It's not clear what they thought Pablo actually did, but he caught two charges for violating the Georgia RICO Act, and in 2022, he took a plea deal for five years in prison and 10 years of probation. There's a chance he'll get a out decade of probation. Issues on the inside. I ain't never seen it. I ain't never seen paperwork that said a decade, nigga. Nigga, they usually put the year, the days, nigga, or the, you feel me? The, Nigga, this shit say plus a decade. There's what a chance the he'll fuck? get out early if he doesn't cause any issues on the inside. But he already got hit with the 1017 curse, and his career is pretty much dead at this point. Asian Doll was the first woman who ever signed with Gucci Mane. She had already been in the game for a couple of years and dropped a few mixtapes. But signed Asian Doll don't look like she's doing too bad right now. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want to hear what's going on. Gucci was definitely her. the biggest moment of her career. 
Asian Doll said that other labels had reached out and wanted to sign her, but she thought linking up with Gucci was the best decision. Asian Doll and Gucci made headlines when the deal was signed, and Asian Doll dropped a couple of mixtapes on the label. It didn't take long before issues started popping up though. A few months after she joined Gucci's label, Asian Doll said she wishes she was still independent. She told the Dallas Observer that being on a label meant everything too organized and that she missed being able to drop whenever she wanted to. Before Asian Doll linked up with Gucci Mane, she had dropped six mixtapes in three years, but the label mm. apparently didn't want her to drop that much. There's a lot of planning that goes on behind the scenes when it comes to who gets to drop and when. See, that's what I don't understand. Yeah, the label gonna give you that bag. Yeah, the label gonna give you that push. Yeah, the label gonna give you that exposure. Yeah, the label gonna, you feel me, get you right. But if you if you doing well by yourself, you feel me? The money coming in. If you doing well by yourself, the money coming in, the exposure going, the exposure gonna come. The money gonna come. If you doing well by yourself, let it just stack on and build up. You feel me? Like if you know you're doing better by yourself, and then you go on and sign, and now it's like, damn, I can't do nothing. Like obviously, like you seen that on the paper. That's how you know niggas don't be. <laughs> Niggas don't be rereading before they put their name on that line, cause, I mean, there's no way they didn't, they can't, they had to include in the paperwork. Oh, you only gonna be able to drop this certain amount, this, this, and that. Oh, you can only do this. You feel me? But, an Asian doll wasn't rocking with how they were doing business. So in 2020, Asian doll announced that she was leaving 1017. According to her, she just asked Gucci to let her out of the deal, and he said okay. It was clear that there wasn't any bad blood, but that didn't stop Asian Doll from getting hit with the 1017 curse. Right after Asian Doll left the label, she got picked up on drug charges in Georgia and had to spend a few days in jail. Then in 2022, she was arrested again. Apparently, she, she but she's out right now, but she she, for not showing up she ain't get hit too bad without a driver's license. Asian Doll didn't have to do a lot of jail time over the situation, but her career started falling off fast, and now her new music isn't making any noise in the industry at all. Lil Wap was another rapper that Gucci signed to 1017 Eskimo. Even though Lil Wap was from Chicago, he was still heavily inspired by Gucci Mane. His rap name was inspired by Gucci's nickname, Goo Wap, and Lil Wap even had a tattoo of an ice cream cone on his face. Lil Wap was the cousin of Famous Dex, and homies of Trippy Red, and started popping off in 2016 when SoundCloud rap was blowing up. So when Gucci started his new label, Lil Wap was one of the first rappers he signed because it seemed like the perfect fit. But Lil Wap's music career never really took off after signing to 1017. After a few months, he started complaining that the label wasn't doing anything to help him. He bro, ended up leaving the label. Why does this everybody signing and leaving, bro? I was gonna say, why does it sound like everybody's signing and leaving the next day, bro? Gucci man, you not doing something right, bro. I don't know who or what you got going on right now with the label, but it really like it really don't sound like you need to be, you know, trying to control no label right now, my label boy. Label in 2018 never did much else in music. Instead, he started doing OnlyFans and later came out as bisexual on Twitter. What the fuck? Even though he looked up to Gucci. What the fuck? This that. I don't have no problem. You feel me? No problem with the people. Just, you know, keep what you do over there. You know. Keep what you do over there. Now that I see the picture, I, I, I didn't, you feel me? Because, you know, nigga's a thug, nigga. How you go from a thug to that? I hearing the name, hearing the name and seeing the picture now, putting two and two together. I do remember this situation now after seeing that picture. Internet was shook when he posted that picture. Niggas thought it was, he was on some young thug shit for some PR shit or whatever, but... I'm pretty sure the niggas actually one of them. So, yeah. She growing up, Lil Wap hated him after signing to his label. In 2022, Lil Wap let it be known he was no longer associated with 1017 and called Gucci Mane a weirdo. Gucci's 1017 Eskimo label didn't work out at all. He allegedly spent over four mil of his own money trying to get his artists popping, but all of them got hit with the 1017 curse, and Gucci had to start all over. How again. though? How does that happen? coming out. With How does that happen, bro? The new 1017, and this time it actually looked different. Gucci started signing some of the hottest rappers in the game, like Pooh Shiesty, Big Scar, Fujiano, Hot Boy West, and Enchanted. Gucci finally had a label full of artists who all had momentum in the industry. They dropped a compilation tape called So Icy Boys, and this overnight, was his, Gucci was running one of the hot- This was the last chance, man. And Pooh doing shit, what? Pooh doing 18, 15 plus. 
Nigga, Big Scar, RP Big Scar, and Enchanting, bro. There's labels in the game. They still couldn't outrun the 1017 curse, though. And this time, the downfall was crazier than ever. Fujiano signed with Gucci to the new 1017 and was on his way up in the industry. He came up in the trenches and had served time on burglary and robbery charges, but it looked like he had switched up how he was moving and was ready to take rapping seriously. But just a few months after he linked up with Gucci, Fujiano was involved with a wild shootout at a club during one of his shows. It's not clear how everything went down, but Fujiano's ops allegedly showed up during the set and started causing issues. Then both sides up their Reason why I don't go outside. One, 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 one of the reasons why I don't go outside. Because I can't get put in no situation where I'm not going to be able to up and blow back, bro. I can't be in a club and niggas start shooting in the club. Niggas don't know where they shooting, who they shooting at, which way to run the duck, nigga. Nigga, you may start running and run right in the middle of them shits, nigga, get filled up. Head tapped. Nigga, you could be running, you could be, nigga, you could be going out the door, nigga. You you, you could see the door, get head tapped. You don't know where they shooting at. How you know, nigga, they, they got switches now. Niggas got switches with... With 33 round, 30 sticks on it and shit like that, nigga. They, they holding that trigger and just spraying that bitch from left to right, nigga. Anybody can get hit. I can't get put in no situation where I can't blow back. Part of the reason why I don't go outside or I don't put myself in big, big groups and big, you know, outings and where there's 50, 60 plus people and I know somebody got a switch in their pants. You feel me? I don't do that. I can't do that. Straps. I don't set myself up for failure like that. You feel Started me? letting off shots while fans ran for cover. Like, look, everybody running. These niggas, this nigga still posted up on the wall like he can't get head tapped. They running. They they looking over their shoulder, standing there, acting like, oh, what? Oh, they may be balloons, nigga. No, you finna get head tapped. Like, eight people niggas is not hit. moving. Why is niggas not moving? Like, fuck, nigga. Like, did. word two. If I'm in a situation like that and niggas is not moving around me, you're getting you're getting trucked, like pushed over, stomped over, like I'm stepping on you, like I'm not finna stand there and wait for you to move, nigga. I'm you, like nigga, like 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 move, like move, nigga, like get the fuck out of the way, you feel me? Type shit, like I'm not finna stand there. I'm like go go, no nigga, get the fuck out of the way, nigga. I may throw your ass on the ground, nigga. Get out my way, bro. Make out of the situation a lot. Fujiano was in charge of shooting like, anyone, but his homie Jarquez Cooper was sentenced to 50 years. Who gonna stand there and wait for us? Woman during the shootout. I mean, get out of my Fujiano's way. Career already you stand there and get ahead. It's about time. to get way worse for him. In December 2020, he was booked for carrying a gun as a convicted felon. The judge let him out on a 50k bond, but Fujiano burned off his ankle monitor and did the race like Tay K. He didn't last long on the run though, and a few months later, he got caught by the feds. Now Fujiano is serving five years in prison, but he's not the only new 1017 rapper who got locked up. Who Shicey hopped in the booth and started blowing up from the jump. He was running up crazy numbers with tracks like Hell Night, Chopper Talk, and Day One. Gucci Mane saw the potential and signed Shicey in 2020, and that's when everything really took off for him. Gucci and Shicey linked up in the studio for the track Still Remember. Then Shicey kept up the momentum by working with superstars like Lil Baby and Lil Durk. Pooh Shicey could have taken over the whole game, but then yeah, he fumbled Pooh the Shicey. bag and got caught up in some wild legal situation. Pooh Shicey was he was booked in 2020 thing. for a crazy robbery and shooting in Florida. Shicey and his homies pulled up to a hotel parking lot to buy drugs and sneakers from two dudes, but then Shicey pulled out a Draco and shot one of them. Shicey had plenty of money to buy whatever drugs and shoes he wanted, but for some reason, he decided to rob the dudes instead. And what makes the situation even crazier is that it went down right across the street from a police station. Shicey bonded out for the robbery, then a few months later, he was arrested again for allegedly upping his strap at a strip club and hitting a security guard. Shicey skated on a strip club shooting because the witness took his statement back, but Shicey didn't get so lucky over the other situation. In 2022, he pleaded guilty. I'm pretty sure he shot the nigga in the ass, bro. You saw the nigga start holding his ass in the video, bro. Out of all them niggas right there, bro, you blew that bit and hit that and hit the nigga in his but ass, bro. Get so look, lucky. look at the nigga right here. Other I'm pretty sure this day car, whoever's selling this, this shot, they look like a Maybach or whatever in the McLaren look. Situation. And he got he the only one with the stick, so that gotta be poo. In 20, that nigga shot that nigga in the in 22, ass. Bro. He pleaded guilty to conspiracy charges, and now he's serving a five-year sentence, just like Fujiano. Five years in prison is tough, but that's nothing compared to what happened to Gucci's artist, Hot Boy West. Hot Boy West came up in Texas and started buzzing in 2019 with his mixtape, Never Had. West already had a long rap sheet when he signed to the new 1017 label. He was sent to Juvie back in 2010 for organized criminal activity, which basically just means gangbanging. Then he was hit with a seven year sentence in 2013 for the same thing. 
Everyone knew that Hot Boy West had history in the streets, but nobody expected what was about to happen. It is not clear how much Gucci Mane paid Hot Boy West when he signed with 1017, but obviously, it wasn't enough for West. Gucci had given West a Rolex when they made the deal, then West decided to sell the watch for 9k. West met up with the dude who wanted to buy the watch, and after the buyer handed over the money, West kept the watch and started to drive away. The other dude tried to stop him, and that's when West started hitting him with the car door. West sped off, but it wasn't long before the feds were on him. The US Marshals caught up to West and arrested him. And what made the situation even worse is that West was carrying a stolen gun too. Getting booked on robbery and gun charges was bad, but it turns out that West already had a way more serious case hanging over his head. And like, I understand it's hard for niggas to leave the hood and leave the past behind, and you feel me? Like, I know it's hard, but nigga, Gucci had to give you at least, he probably gave you at least 80 when you signed at least 80. Shit, you know? A Rolex. And you already had your own back and before that, so yo, the bread was coming in. And you was already a thug before that shit, so you was in the streets already doing shit. So you decided to go sell the watch the nigga gifted you, rob the nigga, beat the nigga with your car door, and go on the run. And that's that's this is why where 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 you are today, cause you decided to do some dumb shit for nine thousand dollars. Nine bands, nigga. If I'm gonna do some dumb shit, nigga, I need two hundred, three hundred plus from it. If I'm going, if I'm gonna do some dumb shit like that, I know you feel me. I need at least two, three hundred plus. I'm not finna do no dumb shit for no reason. Like, if I'm gonna do some dumb shit, I gotta be down bad, nigga. We finna go do a heist, you feel me? I ain't nine bands, my nigga. What are we talking about right now, bro? In 2020, Hot Boy West tried to run his baby mama's car into a cement barrier while their kids were in her car. The 1017 curse only got worse for Hot Boy West after that. He ended up pleading guilty to two counts of assault, family violence, assault with a deadly weapon, robbery, and a bunch of other things. And the judge sentenced Top Boy West to 15 years in prison. Roll Boy was another rapper from Tampa, Florida, who got hit with the 1017 curse. Roll Boy signed the 1017 in 2020. Literally everybody this nigga signed is in jail right now. In jail or dead. Literally. I don't know who's out right now, who he got around him right now. But as far as I'm seeing, everybody's in After jail. After Gucci right heard now. his music and randomly DM'd him at 4 a.m. After he signed, Roboy had the first verse on the track, 1017 Loaded, along with Gucci, Big Scar, Enchanting, Fujiano, and Pooh Shiesty. But like a lot of artists on the label, Roboy's career didn't last long. Things started to go downhill after a gay dude posted a photo of himself with another man that he claimed was Roboy and said Roboy gave him an AP watch. Roboy denied the rumor on Instagram, but also used a slur that caused a controversy online. Then Roboy also took a shot at Gucci, claiming the 1017 chain he gave him was fake and he'd already been dropped from the label. Not long after that, Roboy got arrested for burglary and carrying a concealed weapon and his career never really went anywhere. Hot Boy West, Fujiano, Roboy, and Pooh Shiesty all getting locked up definitely hurt the new 1017. That's but one of the biggest losses was when Big Scar tragically died in 2022. Definitely one of the biggest losses, bro. Cause he had he had ties with some people, bro, out of Memphis, but he, bro. Big Scar came up in Memphis like Pooh Shiesty, and they were actually blood cousins. Scar dropped his first track in 2019, and a year later, he linked up with Gucci Mane and signed with him. 2020 was a huge year for him, but Scar almost died after getting shot in the hip. The bullet traveled through his body and ended up hitting his appendix, so Big Scar had to get the appendix removed. He had already survived a wild car crash in 2016, and Big Scar wasn't going to let the shooting slow him down. He started dropping hot tracks and was blowing up in the industry fast, and in 2022, he was featured on the Double XL freshman class. In December 2022, news broke that Scar was going to go on tour with Key Glock, but unfortunately, that's not how it went down. Big Scar had been struggling with drugs for a long time, and on December 22, 2022, he tragically died from an accidental overdose while he was at his girlfriend's house. Signing rappers from Memphis looked like a good idea for Gucci. There's a lot of great artists in the city, but all of the dudes who signed to Gucci have been hit with the 1017 curse. And this next Memphis Nigga, rapper everybody. from 1017 got wrapped up in a crazy murder case right before his career popped off. 
Matt Critter was one of the hardest working rappers in Memphis. In 2021 and 2022, he dropped almost 20 mixtapes, and his name was buzzing all over the city. He linked up with Gucci Mane in October 2022 and had the chance to blow up, but instead, he allegedly kept both feet in the trenches and caught a body just a couple months later. In December 2022, a dude named Markeith Taylor was killed in an empty parking lot in Memphis. Like, what According is going to the on? police report, niggas can't Matt just rap no more, bro. homies were sitting in an SUV. They told Markeith Taylor to get out of his car and come over to him, and that's when they upped their straps and started letting off shots. Then just a couple of hours later, another dude was shot to death around the same area. It turns out that he was related to Markeith Taylor, and the cops think the two shootings are linked. Another crazy part about the situation is that one of the other dudes arrested for killing Markeith Taylor is Matt Critter's sister's baby daddy. Matt Critter is still signed to 1017, but at this point, it's not clear if he'll ever be free again. But Matt Critter isn't the only one of Gucci's rappers who allegedly upped his strap on somebody, and this next two story is even crazier. Kato Two Times is another Memphis rapper who linked up with Gucci. Bro, so the curse is just Gucci Mane signing a whole bunch of crash outs. Is that what I'm hearing? Is that what I'm hearing? The curse is just Gucci Mane signing a bunch of crash outs that crash out and end up in jail, bro. Signed to the new 1017 label. Before he hopped in the booth, Kato Two Times was allegedly heavy in the streets and repped a group called Rich and Ruthless, aka Double R. Kato already had a first degree murder charge in 2017 and an assault charge in 2019. But when he signed with Gucci, it seemed like he was ready to turn it all around. But right after he signed the contract, Kato got booked for allegedly shooting his own brother at a Lil Baby concert. In September 2023, Lil Baby was doing a show at the FedEx Forum in Memphis. It's not clear what actually went down, but after Lil Baby took the stage, somebody started letting off shots and the show got cut short. The dude who got hit was a rapper named CEO Jizzle. I remember this situation. According to reports, Kato and Jizzle were standing beside each other when the shots started going off, and the cops think Kato was the one who hit Jizzle. If Kato did shoot Jizzle, it was probably an accident though. They're allegedly blood brothers, and they've been making music together for years. Rumors say that Kato was trying to shoot an op, and Jizzle just got caught by a stray bullet. But right now, nobody knows what really happened. When the cops found Kato two times and arrested him, they found out that he was already on bond for three different felony cases, including the murder charge from back in 2017. Just like Matt Critter, Kato two times is still on 1017, but it's gonna be a long time before he can start putting on for the label again. If you're a rapper from Memphis, it's clear that you should sign with pretty much anyone besides Gucci Mane. Cause in 20 Nigga, if you are an artist from anywhere, nigga, it's clear that you should sign with anybody besides Gucci Mane. Shit, nigga. Not just these niggas from Memphis, nigga. Everybody who signed this man end up in some shit, bro. This artist FTO Set was arrested too. FTO Set was still in the Memphis trenches when Gucci reached out to him. It's just Memphis. Set. Memphis got a lot of potential, bro. So. Niggas seeing Gucci man, nigga. Gucci man wanna sign you, nigga. Niggas gonna take that chance, feel me? That he sort of potentially had and wanted to get him out of the streets. I called me like Gucci on the phone. Like Gucci like, hey, what's up? I'm like, what's up, what? He like, I wanna change your life. I wanna see like him. I see something in you. You see, if you just something about you, mm -hmm. like you read it to me, like, I see me and you. So Seth signed with 1017 and started buzzing in the rap game. Everything was looking up for Set, but then in February 2024, the news broke that he had been arrested because his bonds on an old case was revoked. Back in 2022, Set was arrested for running from the cops, having a stolen gun, a Glock with a switch on it, and weed. It's not clear why the bond was revoked, but Set hops on IG and told his fans that he was going to be home soon. It looks like FTO Set bonded out again and is free now, but he might still be facing some serious charges. Gucci obviously likes signing street dudes from the South, and back in 2021, he gave a deal to Arkansas rapper Big Fizzle. Big Fizzle was still in high school playing football when he signed with 1017, but he already had a buzz in the industry from tracks like Bandit and Superfly. The 1017 curse didn't hit Big Fizzle immediately. For a couple of years, he was staying out of trouble and racking up huge numbers. He had features from dudes like Quavo, and Big Fizzle even had a track on the Fast and Furious soundtrack. But it seems like when you sign a Gucci Mane, it's only a matter of time before something bad happens. And in 2024, Big Fizzle got arrested for gun and drug charges. It's not clear if I have to do any jail time over the situation, but hopefully he gets back to the bag and learns how to move smarter. Big Fizzle getting booked like that isn't good, but at least he didn't get stripped out of his clothes on camera like this next dude. No, 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 why he did him like that? 
why he did him like that, bro? And bro, I know the video, bro. I know the video, bro. Oh my God, why he did him like that? And I forgot Lil Rod just signed a little. I forgot Lil Rod just signed the Gucci Mane, bro. Nigga said, yeah, he don't have to do some time, but at least he ain't get stripped out his clothes like the next Big dude. Big Fizzle getting booked Yo. like that is good, but at least he didn't get stripped out of his clothes on camera like this next dude. Lil Rise, a rapper from Alabama who started off independent and built some buzz around his name. One day he was sleeping at his crib and his manager woke him up and said Gucci was on the phone and wanted to talk to him. Lil Rye thought his manager was joking at first, but it turns out Gucci had been trying to link up with him for a while. I was asleep at my home by Dave house and he woke me up like Gucci on the phone trying to talk to you. So I just turned around like, bro. then he do it again. And he like, your manager on the phone. He like, Gucci trying to call you. So yeah, we get on the phone. Lil Rai chopped it up with Gucci over the phone. Then Gucci flew him out to New York and signed him to the new 1017. After he signed the deal, Lil Rai went on the No Jumper podcast and Adam22 actually asked him about the 1017 curse. Are you worried at all about the alleged 1017 curse? Uh, no, I'd be hearing about this. I ain't worried about that. You don't buy it? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. But that's because he didn't know what was about to happen to him. Lil Rye started beef with NBA Youngboy because he thought Youngboy dissed him and called him a rookie. Youngboy had been locked up on house arrest in Utah for a while. He kind of did. Lil Rye sent shots at him on the track. I he kind of did. He did. He did call him a rookie. He thought he. I'm. Mean, you know, Youngboy. Youngboy not gonna say it, but you know, if we put in situations and and bars together in multiple songs, Youngboy had them boys on your trail. He may say he didn't, but. I don't respond and raps. I don't stay too far from Utah. Take a trip to see the view, huh? Who, why, you, die, who, by, woo. My brother claim he died, move. Ain't believe him till I see him draw blood. When you hit in your head, that blood rush out just like a flood. Lil Rye and NBA Youngboy started going back and forth. Then some goons caught up to Rye while he was at a mall in Atlanta and robs him on camera. Youngboy clowned him over the situation, and rumors started flying that the NBA crew were the ones who jumped Lil Rod. But it turns out that it was actually some Foel affiliates who robbed him. After it went down, the Foel dudes banned Lil Rod from Atlanta and said he better get out of the city. All right, we ain't take your chain because you ran to the police, 12 ass. Screaming with your goof ass. Get the f out of the city. You know why we need to take your chain? Tap in, Police right? said, tap in. But Rod clapped back and told him to drop their location. The whole situation. Why he added 10? C, 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 C. Why he added? The situation was a bad look for Rod, though. He was able to keep his 1017 chain, but that didn't stop people from. Why he added 10? See, that's where, that's where 10, not one of them. No glaze. If you done seen the documentaries and the watch the little two, three, four hour documentary on Youngboy, bro. 10 is not one of them. 10 is not one of them. Nigga, you just got stripped out your shit by some 4L niggas, and you gonna act. Clowning him all over social media. Lil Rye was talking tough online after it went down, but the video of him getting robbed like that is probably gonna follow him for the rest of his career. Yeah, you can talk Even crazy, though he never but officially signed to Gucci, nigga, you Coast got to Ghost on. is another rapper who got hit by the 1017 curse. Coach the Ghost is a rapper from Brooklyn who's affiliated with a set of the GDs that are known to be for grip rappers like Pop Smoke and Fabio Foreign. Coach the Ghost blew up with a song called Hitless, where he dissed Pop Smoke right after Pop had just died. Gucci heard the song and asked fans on Instagram to help him find Coach so he could sign him to the new 1017. So you heard him diss Pop and you want to sign him. Soon after, Coach the Ghost posted photos of himself rocking a 1017 chain, and everyone thought he signed to the label, but when the So Icy Gang compilation dropped with all the new artists on the label, Coach the Ghost wasn't on it, sparking rumors that he was already dropped. Coach the Ghost later revealed that Gucci helped him get a deal directly with Atlantic, the label that owned 1017. Coach the Ghost was a Brooklyn drill rapper and didn't really fit the Southern trap sound of 1017. Plus, Gucci probably didn't want to get in the middle of one of the biggest beefs going on in New York, especially after Coach the Ghost did pop smoke. Okay. Signing to Atlantic didn't really help Coach the Ghost's career or save him from the 1017 curse. Coach the Ghost never had another big I hit don't, after I don't that. Know who this is, in 2022, but... he ended up getting arrested for murder while he was on the run in Georgia. Coach the Ghost had already spent six years in prison for a shooting and was still on parole when he got locked up, so he probably won't be out anytime soon. It's wild how Gucci's artists keep getting locked up, jumped, and dying young. 
A lot of fans think the label is cursed, and even Gucci's wife Keisha Kayora asked him about why his artists keep going to jail. It's a question a lot of people have been asking, but Gucci's answer made a lot of sense. Well, you know what I'm saying? To be honest, you know, I was one of those type of artists. I was always going back and forth to jail. And um, I try to, you know what I'm saying, like help those artists that I feel like, you know, I see a lot of myself in, you know what I'm saying? Right. So with that being said, you know, I try to ride out with them through their little bumps or whatever they're going through. But I feel like if I'm not helping them, who else gonna help them? Right. You know what I'm saying? Nobody says that part of the story, you know what I'm saying? Gucci knows what it's like to bounce back from that and come out on top. And he wants to help young artists who are headed in a bad direction. Almost all of Gucci's artists- I mean, he can't really do nothing once they done already got hit with them years. Shit, Records, what he gonna do? Linked up with him. But Gucci still gave him a chance to leave the streets behind and make it in the music industry. But even if you give someone yeah, I mean, a chance, yeah. you can't make them switch up how they move. And unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of the rappers he signs just fumbles the bag. Gucci's been getting a lot of hate just because he's trying to get people out of the trenches. Some people think his label is cursed, but at the end of the day, he's just making deals with people who don't know how to leave the streets alone. For his first label, man, look, Gucci, bro. At the end of the day, I don't, I don't think, you feel me? I don't think the label for you. I don't think the label for Gucci. I think, you know, Gucci was better off, you know, you know, just doing him, you feel me? Just, just you know, yeah, he wanted to give other niggas that opportunity, but I don't think, I don't think, because uh, it seems like every time somebody got picked up, organ nigga, they either got dropped, went to jail, beat up, or they dead, you feel me? And that's that's kind of, you feel me? It's kind of hard for niggas to, uh, it's kind of hard for niggas to, uh, like, you feel me, back you when that's like, you feel me? But I don't got too much more to say, you feel me? This was a long video, video I wanted to watch though, so I don't really mind. Damn, we've been here for 40 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and also see down comments below, bruh. Go to my Instagram, send shit to my Instagram. Music been kind of slow, so you can send me anything. It really don't got to be music that you want me to react to. Uh, I'm going to start going live on this bit, too. So when I go live, make sure y'all come through. Going to be doing some gaming and shit like that. If you look in my background, bro, you can tell I be saying gaming, bro. So, yeah, we're going to start going live, doing some gaming and shit like that. Hopefully, whenever I got time, whenever I can. But uh, other than that, I'm gone.